Okay, so it is uh, day three on the job of the step or the saddle tank. I was out here last Monday and installed a lot of the electronics, apex equipment, etc. And we've arrived today so that we can uh, do the rock work, fill the tank with water. And um, there's Condi, so uh, let's get to work. Okay, so as mentioned, I was here last Monday and got a lot of the uh, electronics in place. There's the Apex Brain, the energy bar, another energy bar to operate all of the various components within the system. There is the filter system. It is tight and it is compact. Um, it's a simple sump. There's a crash chamber, a filter sock chamber. And then there's a protein skimmer, there is a uh, rain algae scrubber <clears throat> uh, from Santa Monica. The protein skimmer is a bubble magnus. And there is a JCOD DC operated pump that will drive the system. Uh, there will be a uh, trident on here. There's the dose uh, reservoir, uh, the dosing mechanism, uh, leak detection. And then above the top of the tank, is a uh, another energy bar which is where all the lights um, the tonsy internal pumps as well as the um, uh, fans that will cool the tank this will not be a chiller cooled tank but a evaporative cooling driven system a couple of additional modules up there one for um, uh, dimming of the lights and the other one is for the lunar lights uh, here is the return coming into the system I'm going to end up having to replace that uh, elbow on the inside and then the uh, pocket overflow just not enough room or width inside the tank to have a traditional overflow and so this is what I'm going to call a, a pocket overflow and this side of the tank is 70 inches across because of the uh, supporting beam or structural beam there as well as the sewer pipe on that side uh, this is why the tank became a step tank. You can see that it uh, notches around those two um, supporting beams on either side, which means that this side, which is the, at the end of a long hallway, is only 35 inches. And it's a picture frame view into the back side of the tank. And then on the uh, Tuesday <clears throat> next week I'll be meeting with the cabinet guy to uh, tell him what I need for cabinetry or how the cabinetry should fit around the tank. So our big challenge today is to create, recreate uh, the rock structure inside the tank. I miscalculated on the widths of the inside and everything that we had done weekends ago no longer fits. And this is a very tall narrow tank Outside dimensions are 18 inches. The acrylic thickness is inch and a quarter. So we've just lost two and a half. So now we're down to 15 and a half inches on the inside. And I've got to allow two and a half inches on both front and back for my aquarium cleaning magnets. So that brings us down to about 10 inches of width um, for the structure on the inside. And it's got a span at least 36 of the 48 inches in height. So as Condi comes along redoing the left hand side of the rock sculpture or the saddle, got a little bit of a taper there and he's got um, a number of tall narrow rocks drilled and pinned quite sturdily so uh, he's working on fitting in a top piece there and then a little bit of a wrap around down through the center of the tank. I'm starting to pre-mount the bases for the uh, 
articulating mounts for the Kessels inside there. There'll be four across the top of the tank. Um, obviously two will come down through the, the main saddle and then there'll be one on either edge to illuminate uh, the side pieces. And Condi is drilling frag plug holes so that I can at a later time easily introduce frags into the tank. And they'll have a uh, pre-made seat. And since it's going to be introduced with a pair of tongs and a tall, narrow tank, that'll make it a whole lot easier. And if it wasn't challenging enough to get the rockwork lowered down into the tank with the tongs, Condi also needs to move the pieces horizontally to push the pins in the rocks into the opposing holes in the opposing rocks. Our style of rockwork is drilled and pinned together meaning holes in both opposing pieces of the rock have carbon fiber rods between them to hold them onto each other. Sometimes it's a series of rocks with a single pin, other times it's individual rocks individually pinned to each other. Collectively, all of these rocks build up or stack up to form a reef structure. And all of this is pre-drilled outside the tank and then piece by piece transferred to the inside of the tank. Okay, so the first portion of the saddle on the left side is now in place. Going to start working on the right side and then we'll kind of come back and fill in the two areas or at least the areas at the top there. In between Condi's addition of the rock pieces, I try to slip in and add a component or two. In this case, it's one of the LED light strips that I'm attaching to the narrow side of the tank. So for internal circulation, we have these uh, Tunzi Model 6255s. They're big boys. And what I've done is because of the thickness of the material, it would be difficult to use the magnets to attach to inch and a quarter thick uh, acrylic. So I had these, um, uh, call them pockets made, magnet holders. Um, there's a brace across the bottom so the magnet doesn't fall out the bottom. And it's just a little pocket. And so they get glued to the inside of the tank and serve as the mount. Uh, for the magnets on the Tunzies, and there will be two of them, one there shooting across to that side and then one will have mounted over here shooting down across to this side. Uh, I've got them glued with acrylic cement now and so we'll uh, let those dry and then we'll place the Tunzies in there. I did have little holes drilled there at the top of the tank for the power cord to sneak through and I'm hoping that the uh, connector, which I'll have to dissect from the interior of the uh, uh, controller, will pass through there. Otherwise I'm going to have to cut the cord and I kind of really don't want to do that, but uh, it's not a uh, problem I can't overcome. So Condi's working on the right hand side of the uh, saddle rock work. Got a couple of boxes stacked up to use as a platform uh, or a pattern to work around. Again, it's a matter of drilling and pinning. And so it's funny how little things turn into big problems. This is the controller for the Tunzi. My first issue was I can't find a Phillips head screwdriver that will work with those tiny little screws in the back. On these I've kind of rounded out now so I really don't even have a slot. 
Well, we did manage to find a decent um, screwdriver, Phillips head, and I managed to open up the unit and I was able to disconnect the little connector out of there. What I'm trying to do is I had two holes drilled in the top corner of the tank there so I could push the connector through. Well, the connector's wider than the hole itself, but if I push it through at the right angle, I can actually get it through such as what I did here. But, the times he's on the outside and the connector's now on the inside. So, kind of created my own little problem. Hey, can you make any more noise over there? <laughs> I'm having a problem over here. So having finally been able to remove my wrongly inserted connector, I can now begin to move forward again. Got it. Hello, my name is Jim Stein and I operate Aquarium Design and I offer aquarium sales, installation, supplies, livestock and aquarium maintenance in Thousand Oaks, Westlake Village, Agora Hills, Calabasas, and Malibu, California. I specialize in custom aquariums ranging from freshwater, saltwater fish, living coral reef, and jellyfish display systems. I've been involved professionally and at many levels within the aquarium industry since 1987, and have been in business for myself since 1999. I've worked for many people, and some for over 20 years now. My team can provide you with a unique range of aquarium systems ranging from rectangular in-wall to freestanding cylinders, bow fronts, and custom curve shapes. Additionally, we can offer a variety of aquascapes such as an artificial coral insert, coral skeleton decorations, custom-made branching rock structures, and themed environments such as this Jules Verne version of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. With today's technology in energy efficient DC water pumps and LED lighting, operating costs are much lower. We can automate many of the maintenance features such as water replenishment, water changes, lighting schedule including moonlight lighting and even your general daily feedings. I can even install an app on your smartphone that will allow you to monitor, to be notified, to control and view your aquarium anywhere in the world. If you're looking for something truly unique, give me a call and let's discuss the possibilities of creating your aquatic dream. I'm knowledgeable, insured, and very reliable. My name is Jim Stein and you can reach me at 805-241-7140. I look forward to helping you achieve your aquatic dream. Reef Hobbyist Magazine believes that our hobby, our fellow hobbyists, and the animals in our care are best served by the free distribution of quality information. Reef Hobbyist Magazine provides hobbyists with critical husbandry information with an emphasis on marine ornamental breeding efforts. Reef Hobbyist Magazine is available for free in local fish stores across the country or you can subscribe at www.reefhobbyistmagazine.com. Hi there, my name is Jim Stein and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium and the third is myfishtank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's myfishtank.com. So with a telephone call to Montana, we were able to utilize Scott's assistance and we've got the um, Apex brain now connected to the house Wi-Fi. So the Apex is now online. Uh, we still need to obviously go through and connect everything, but um, 
Uh, it's now showing up on the uh, app on my phone so I can see everything. Um, those uh, energy bars and um, uh, modules up there are now active. Okay, so we've managed to make a little progress here. Condi's got the basic rock foundation into place. I just finished mounting the uh, breakout box there. That's the uh, connector strip uh, for the various float switches. Uh, use some magnets there for the floats down inside the tank, which will determine when the ATO comes on, when the ATO goes off. Uh, letting me know if the water level in the sump is too high or too low. Uh, I still need to find a place to mount the probes or the rack and the probes for the uh, apex, but um, that's coming along. Next step is to uh, get the alternating Tunzi mount mounted over on this side here. And then go up and start uh, installing the rest of the lights, the four Kessels, and the big long LED light strip. Okay, so we managed to get one Tunzi mounted in position and was able to thread it through that hole there. The other one we've got uh, taped up against the end of the tank and should be able to uh, position it pretty shortly. Okay, Kessels are in, not powered yet, and the Tunzies are positioned, and the cables are run. Uh, I have mounted the ballasts, uh, or controllers I should say, right here. And so the next thing is to put in the uh, 70 or 60 inch LED light strip. And then I think we can uh, begin to plug stuff in lighting wise. And time to uh, introduce some sand into the system. So the sand is in the tank. And uh, tank's got form now. Developing more form sheets. As the representation of the bottom. And Condi is uh, screwing in the. Uh, attachment point on the far end of the 60 inch. After I put in all the lights, I've been, I've been getting work worse than the guys from Home Depot. <laughs> Poor gold, you know what I mean? This is terrible. I put all the lights in, all the rock in, all the sand in. You know, it's a... Uh, call it the complaint department, I have to get out of here. So that's a 60 inch XHO uh, Reef Bright LED light strip along with the uh, 36 inch on the other side so this will give it that blue rich hue inside there and then in a little bit we'll turn the Kessels on. So we also have lunar lighting in this tank which consists of three small blue LED lights and that's what he's mounting is the one in the middle. There'll be one on either side and they'll hook up to uh, one of those modules there that will program uh, those lights coming on at the different phases of the moon as well as the uh, mimicking the time that the moon would be out. So we've managed to get all the lights in and all the wires and ballast in there. Everything's cable tied nice and neat up on the underside. So what you have there is a uh, 36 inch blue and a 60 inch blue uh, XHO Reef Bright LED light strip across the front and the back. There were four Kessels in there and we managed to get all the Kessel ballast nice and neat kind of hanging back there. Uh, space is an issue up here. All the wires, even though it may look a little tangly, are all cable tied up along the top. Over here is where the uh, energy bar is, and there's going to be a stack of ballast here. Uh, got a solution for it, which is that, which I call the bunk bed, but I have to trim it to make it work. Essentially, it's just a uh, wooden standoff that I can stack ballast uh, over here. 
Uh, but anyhow, I think we're at the point where we can actually begin to uh, put water in the tank. Uh, the filter system is down here. That's been ready to go for a number of days. Uh, I don't think we need to get the probes for the apex in. Certainly the dose and the trident don't need to go in at this point. Um, the ATO would be beneficial, but I am not ready to fire that one up yet either. So Condi's going to be bringing out the uh, DI canister and we're going to on demand make water here. And then there's a bag of salt over there. So that's a deionization canister. So we're going to on demand make purified water here out of their faucet through the DI canister and then straight into where the tank is at. All right, so some water starting to run into the tank. It'll take a little while to fill up, but uh, yeah, we'll put the salt in. And we now have water coming from the tank down into the uh, sump filter, into the crash chamber. Spill, fill up and spill over into the filter sock here in a moment. And then into the open end of the unit. Okay, so the tank is running. Water is passing through the filter system. We had uh, one little surprise. Uh, the canister for the GFO container was not tightened, so we had water running out there. But that was discovered right away, addressed and resolved. Beyond that, there's no other leaks or drips, which is a good thing. Um, we did the uh, water level power out test, and with the return as it is in the tank now and the water level with where it is at now, Without power, it stops about three inches from the top of the sump. Um, water has got all the salt in it, still in the process of clearing up. Um, so that'll take, I'm sure, all night. And there's a little issue with the uh, protein skimmer, but I think it was more of an assembly issue, and we'll get that figured out here in a second. Uh, as far as probes for the apex, I did put the temperature and the salinity in there, but just kind of temporarily. Uh, I've not made their positions official yet, but since I may not be here for the next couple of days. Huh? Fire it up again. Okay. Since I'm not going to be here for the next couple of days, I'd like to monitor it. So let's see here. skimmer on. So the skimmers now turn back on. Gears are connecting. Yeah. Okay. So we got that solved. Um, Add a little water into the ATO reservoir just because we have the DI canister here, but um, uh, lights are working on top, Tunsies are working inside, um, no leaks, no drips, basic equipment is working. Uh, I'm a happy, happy guy. So most of the equipment is now running in the tank as well as uh, in, down in the filter system. The water is still in the process of slowly clearing up, but we have finished the job. There was no real issues as far as any leaks, drips, or problems that we couldn't address. There's still a few things left that I need to kind of fine tune, such as cable tying more of the uh, cables together so it doesn't look so stringy, for lack of a better description, but then that seems to be one of the challenges these days with aquariums and all the electronics that come with it is the uh, out of control uh, wiring or excess wiring that's left over but i'm pleased to, with the way that it turned out okay so it's been a 13 hour day and this is the third of three days 
that we uh, spent working on the tank. Uh, it turned out real well. I'm very pleased with how everything came together. I'm very pleased with the work that Condi did on the rock work. And I threw him a whole bunch of curves in regards to that, so I thank him a whole lot. Um, make sure to come back for future episodes. Until then, keep moving forward.